In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the eight most common website errors or server errors. These are not specific to WordPress, but they do happen with WordPress. And anything that's hosted on a server can fall victim to these errors. And we're getting started right now. Unfortunately, I don't have live examples or screenshots myself of all of these errors, but Google Images does. So we're going to cruise through Google Images, looking at what these errors look like, so you get an idea of what it is and if you encountered it before, or when you do encounter it, you will now know what it means. The 400 errors, the first one we'll look at, look at a bunch of other four level errors, and then some five level errors. The 400 error is also called a bad request error. And here's some screenshots of what it would look like. Google, actually, I've encountered this in Google quite a bit, the 400 error. And on websites, it usually looks like this one over here on the right. But it's usually caused by one of three different things. The first is a corrupt cookie on your browser. So if you clear your browser's cache and cookies, then it should fix the 400 error. Or it's a malformed request by the browser itself and that you can't fix because the browser is programmed by somebody else. So you can't fix that one yourself. It's a bug, they will patch it and hopefully fix it. Or it is created by a human error when they're creating a manually created HTTP request on a website. If that isn't created properly, it can cause a 400 error. Next is a 401 error. So let's look that up over here. And a 401 error is unauthorized access. And you actually set this up using the HT password file. I have a tutorial for that in the card up above or description down below. And it looks like this. And it's often accompanied by a login box. And that login box allows you to log in and then access the site properly. Or if the server does not want you to access the site at all, you just have something like this. You can't get in here, sorry. So that's a 401 error. Usually these are caused intentionally because you either have to log in or the site doesn't want you to access it. So usually this one is intentional. The next common error we're gonna look at is a 403 error. This is a forbidden error. It's similar to the permissions error because it is permission based quite often. And it basically says you're forbidden to access this because the server has refused your connection. And you can fix this, or the common causes, I'm sorry, are a missing index file in a directory someone's trying to access or a permission based problem in the HD access file. And I have a tutorial linked up above and a description down below that shows you how to fix this error. And hopefully you can get it resolved using that tutorial. And if you find these kind of tutorials helpful, make sure you click subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any of the ones I publish because I'm going to publish a lot of these and I have already published a lot, but make sure you hit subscribe and follow along. The next error we're looking at is a 404 and this is a page not found error. So if you move a page for whatever reason, so if you have a page at uh, mywebsite.com forward slash puppies, and you move that page to forward slash dog walking. That puppy's page, if that was indexed by Google or linked to from somewhere else on the internet, that will now return a 404 error. The way to fix that is to make a 301 redirect from the old page to the new page. I have a tutorial up above and description down below all about fixing 404 errors. So if you encounter this error, make sure you check out that tutorial. Next is a 500 error. That's all for the common 404s. There are other, sorry, common 400 errors. There are other 400 level errors, but they're not common. So we're not covering those. The 500 error is quite common. It's the internal server error. It's very nondescript. It just says something went wrong. There's a bunch of different causes and solutions to those causes. I have linked a tutorial up above and the card down below again to fix this error if you encounter it. So make sure you check out that tutorial if you have this error. The next error we're looking at is a 502 and that is a bad gateway error. And this error is quite often encountered with services like Cloudflare, a proxy server where you route traffic through it and then the traffic goes from say Google through the proxy server and then to your website. And this is the screenshot from Cloudflare. This is how it would appear for you. And it's a fairly common error and it resolves itself. It's an issue at Cloudflare. It's not an issue on your site. It's not an issue with Google. It's an issue with the connection to Cloudflare and other services, not, not only Cloudflare does this, but it's, a, it's an, a problem with their connection and when they resolve it, then it will load normally and the 502 error will be gone. And the 503 error is the next one. This is a service unavailable error and this means your site's down. This is a, a, not a great error because it usually means either your site is gone because of some DNS configuration mistake or your CPU is maxed out or your RAM is maxed out using up all your server resources and the server's down that is a problem. And the 403 error is usually a temporary one that resolves itself. But if your site or your client site has a 503, I said 403 earlier, sorry. If your site or client site has a 503 error, you have to go and check to make sure your DNS is correct 
make sure the back end of your server is correct, contact your host support and have them check it out. And if they say it's just a temporary error, you're maxing out your CPU or whatever, you have to either upgrade your hosting or fix whatever is maxing out your CPU, which might be a bot that's slamming your site or a botnet or a DDoS attack. Either way, it's usually a temporary error and you usually get through it, but make sure all your ducks in a row. And if you don't know what you're doing, contact your host support and they'll help you through it. The last very common error we're looking at is the 504 error. This error is very similar to the 502 and it just means it's a bad gateway or a gateway timeout, sorry. And this gateway timeout, again, here's an example from Cloudflare, 504 gateway timeout. It's with the connection between the proxy and your site, there's something gone. There's something not connecting properly. It could be maxing out server resources. It could be all kinds of things, but it is a temporary error that's usually resolved. But if you find you have this error for an extended period, you should contact the, the support for Cloudflare or whatever service you're using to route your traffic. You should contact your host support. And beyond that, there isn't too much you can do aside from wait. And that is the four or 504 error. So in this video, we covered the 400 error, the 401, the 403, the 404, the 500, the 502, 503, 504. And all these are very common server errors and website errors. They're really server errors. People also call them website errors. Make sure you check out the resources I linked to in this video to fix them if you're encountering any of these issues. And if you're not encountering any of these issues, check out this video up here, which is the top 10 most common WordPress mistakes I see over and over again. There's probably something in there that you're doing right now or your clients are doing right now that needs to be fixed. And if you already watched that one, check out this one down here. This is what YouTube thinks you should watch. And until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.